room of a solid can be by cross sections. All right, so here, um, here's how we're going to do this, okay? When the cross sections have an area of A of X, okay, that's the part that's going to vary from problem to problem. It's what is the shape of the cross section? So what is the area formula for the shape of that cross section? And what what goes into that? Okay. Um, when they are perpendicular to the x-axis, we are going to integrate with a b, and our formula needs to be in respect to x, with respect to x. Sometimes they tell us to do it uh, perpendicular to the y-axis, uh, and we need to integrate from c to b, and our formula needs to be in terms of y. That's what that first um, thing is right there. Okay. So we, you are going to have to figure out what the equations for a of x and a of y are based on the shape of the cross section. They will tell you what the shape should be, and then you're going to have to use the uh, equations that they give you to kind of plug it into that. Sometimes you're going to have to manipulate an equation. Okay, not very often, but sometimes you are. Yes. I'm going to yeah right here with the vigor. Okay, so. What we're looking at, this is actually a, a figure in the textbook, okay? Um, but you've got your x, y axis right here, um, and these cross sections are perpendicular to x, y. So we can kind of just look here. Um, forget the 3D portion of it for a second, okay? Forget the 3D portion. Okay. Alright, just look at this two-dimensional right now, okay? What we're looking at are, uh, we've got two curves that are graphed in the x-y plane. This, this, this is probably supposed to be a parabola, okay? This is probably supposed to be a parabola right here in the x-y plane. Alright, so what they are doing is, these are cross-sections that are squares, okay? So it's perpendicular to the x-axis, so they draw the base of the square right here, okay, and it's a square, so the height is the same length as the base, all right? Um, so depending on where you are on the curve, if you're right here, you don't have a cross section, okay? If you're right here, you kind of, you've got a shorter cross section. Uh, if you move to this point on the curve, your square is going to have this much of a base, so its height is going to be taller than the cross section that goes here on this side. Okay? Yeah, it's kind of weird. It's really weird. Um, how does that happen? Yeah, it's kind of built on a lazy thing. Well, I will well, walk. I'll, 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 Solid with a base that is bounded by these two curves 1 minus x over 2 and negative 1 plus x over 2 and x equals 0. Okay, with cross sections perpendicular to the x axis or squares. So these are the steps you need to follow every time. Number one, you want to graph the base of the solid. I have already done that for you. Okay, this is a rough sketch of what they describe. <clears throat> The top curve right there is the 1 minus x over 2. The bottom curve is the negative 1 plus x over 2. And the x equals 0 is telling you that you start there at the x-axis. Step number 2, we need to determine the area formula for the cross-section. So they tell us that the cross-sections are squares perpendicular to the x-axis. So you may want to draw in a couple just to give yourself a visual there. Okay, that's going to be the base. All right, and obviously you can't draw it three-dimensionally on your paper, so those are going to be some of the bases. Okay, so they're squares. So our area formula, well, area of a square is side squared, correct? Well, in this case, what is the length of our side? How can we figure out the length of our side? Well, we don't need the x coordinate. No, how can we figure out the length of that right there? What's this length? 
It's the high, it's oh. whatever the y coordinate is, right? This length is whatever the y coordinate is. So if we put them together, we are going to get uh, the length of that whole side. Okay, so each side right here is 1 minus x squared, whatever x is, minus negative 1 plus x over 2. Why do I subtract? Well, because the y value for the lower curve is going to be negative, but we need the length of it. We don't need the negative part, we need just the length of it. So if we subtract it, it gets rid of that negative part. Okay? So the side, each side, is going to be 1 minus negative 1, so that's 1 plus 1, that's 2. Negative x minus, or excuse me, negative x over 2 minus x over 2. Well, that's just negative x, right? Negative x over 2 minus x over 2 is negative 2x over 2, which is negative x. So the area formula for our cross sections is 2 minus x, that's the base of the square, and it's a square, so then that's squared. That's the area of each cross section. We want to leave the x in there because obviously some are longer than others, depending on the x coordinate. Okay? So our integral is going to be from 0 is our left bound, that's where we start. <clears throat> we need to find this point here on the end. Okay, we need to find that point here on the end. There are a couple of ways that we can do that. In this case, they're both, uh, they meet on the x-axis. So technically we can <clears throat> just set 1 over x minus 2 equal to 0. Or we could set them equal to each other. We're going to end up with the same answer. So it turns out that that happens at 2. So our integral goes from 0 to 2. <clears throat> excuse me, are the base of this solid is of the area formula integrated with respect to x. And then it, it's just an integration problem. Okay, now, to be careful with this, we cannot integrate it the way that it is. Right? We need to coil that out because we don't have um, a chain rule, so to speak, for integration. So when we evaluate this, we need to foil that out. 4 minus 2x minus x squared. No, 4 minus 4x. Excuse me. Yeah, 4 minus 4x minus x squared. <clears throat> Integrate 4x minus 2x squared minus x cubed over 3. Just using our power rule. And we're integrating from 0 to 2. That was not supposed to turn into a 3. <clears throat> so we've got 4 times 2 minus 2 times 2 squared minus 2 cubed over 3. Shoot, yes, that should be positive x squared. Thank you. It should be positive x squared. So positive x cubed over 3 plus 2 cubed over 3. Minus, when we plug in 0, we're just going to get 0. Okay? So we've got 8 minus uh, 8 plus 8 thirds. So the area of this volume, uh, excuse me, the volume of this figure, whatever it really turns out to be, uh, it's, it's going to kind of have curved sides and whatnot, um, is 8 thirds. And they didn't give us units. Usually they don't give you units, but it is volume, so technically, you know, stick a cube there on the end. Eight thirds units cubed. I don't have this If it's not boxed, then it doesn't matter. If it's the last one that you write, yeah. It's the line. It's having those two squares. That's okay. It's the alarm. It's like the door alarm. Okay, let's look at example two. Find the volume of the solid whose base is bounded by the circle x squared plus y squared equals four. 
with cross sections that are equilateral triangles perpendicular to the x-axis. Okay. I, I don't know what this is. No. They're perpendicular to the x-axis. The base is perpendicular to the x-axis. So you're going to have triangles that are sticking up. Yes. Okay. So you're going to have bases here. And from that base, you're going to have your triangle pointing up in here. So the tip of the triangle is going to be over the x-axis because they're equilateral triangles. Okay. <clears throat> so... First of all, x squared plus y squared equals 4. That is a circle centered on the origin with a radius of, what's the radius of the circle? 2. Okay, remember this is r squared, so the radius is 2, so that means this point over here is negative 2. This point over here, excuse me, is positive 2. All right. Um, We've got our base, we need to figure out our area formula, okay? So they are equilateral triangles. So the area of any triangle is one-half times the base times the height. Well, we have two variables, and we're going to have to replace them so that the only variable in it is x. All right, so let's think about this for a second. The base is that purple line that I drew right there. That's the base. So the length of that base, let's think about it, this point up here, if we express it in terms of x, so that means we need to solve our equation here for x, or excuse me, solve it for y, so that it's in terms of x. <clears throat> so move x squared to the other side, take the square root of both sides, so anytime you take the square root, you've got the positive and the negative. So the positive is this coordinate up here. The positive square root of 4 minus x squared. The negative is this one down here. Okay? It's the same distance, just one's a positive distance, one's a negative distance. Okay? So our base is really uh, 2 times the square root of 4 minus x squared. So you've got the same distance going, going up from the x-axis. There's no simplifying you can do. You can't take the square root of both those terms. We've got to figure out the height of these equilateral triangles. Um, so I'm going to just sketch, okay, one of these equilateral triangles. We know that equilateral triangles means that the um, sides and the, um, all the sides are equal. Okay? All the sides are equal. So we know, I'm going to split it up because i got to figure out that perpendicular height right there. Okay? So I know that this piece right here is the square root of 4 minus x squared. Because the whole base is two of those. Okay, so that, that's half the base, is the square root of 4 minus x squared. Equilateral triangle, we got a 60 degree angle right here. We got a 30 degree angle right here. Now, um, I think that I mentioned this at one point in time, but in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, there's a relationship that exists. Okay. We also know that since this is equilateral, this length is 2 times the square root of 4 minus x squared. Now, I only mention that. That doesn't really have anything to do with what we're trying to figure out right now. But I mention that because, if you will remember, there's something that's always true about 30, 60, 90 triangles. They have ratios of their lengths. Okay? The side crossing 30 degrees, we call that length y. Okay, I'm going to get a little bit. We call that length y. The side crossing the 90 degree angle is always 2 times that amount. Y'all remember what the side of the 60 was? It's the square root of 3 times that number. <laughs> we, we talk about, I mentioned it like one day in pre-calculus. It, it's, it's honestly, it's a piece of geometry that's kind of gotten lost in this whole review of math 1, 2, and 3. 
um, that he told us to do. 